morning, everyone. Thank you for being here on this gloriously sunny day, <laughs> for being indoors. Uh, I'm Kim Conniff Tabor. I'm the editorial director of the Democracy and Culture Foundation uh, and also the program director for Art for Tomorrow. I'm happy to welcome you here today, and I also just wanted to take a little moment uh, to thank all of our moderators and uh, speakers for coming on this journey with us. Uh, you're obviously the ones who bring life into these stories that we're trying to tell. Uh, and of course, to our wonderful team at the Democracy and Culture Foundation, um, especially I wanted to shout out to Nicole Karali, who most of you know in some way, shape, or form, because she is the one who has brought this all together on the logistics side. So a big thank you to Nicole. Um, and I wanted to thank you, the audience, for being so engaged with the sessions uh, and with each other. Uh, because it's these connections and these inspirations that will hopefully power your own work in the months and the years to come. So just a few highlights, because we've already had a couple days of this event, and uh, we've had all kinds of interesting ideas, conversations come to fruition. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight a few of the quotes that stood out for me over the past few days. There are many more, but uh, a, a few of them I wanted to mention. Um, especially for Dana Dajani, uh, who challenged us with this true question. She said, is the true question, is art a way out, or should we be asking, is art a way in? Uh, Jana Peel on the first evening said, why is it that you often have business people on art boards, but rarely do you have artists on business boards? It's just something to think about. Adam Weinberg, uh, yesterday, if you go around criticizing everyone, you'll end up having nothing to show in your museums. <laughs> Uh, Eric Shen, uh, in the context, same context of the role of the museum, uh, we're no longer in a time of singular narratives. Christian Levitt, uh, who talked about how only 70 years ago men still totally dominated exhibitions. Uh, and then Rachel Lehman went on to say, well, now only 5% of NFTs are sold are by women. Uh, Michael Zankan, who was also on a panel about NFTs, um, surprised, I think, some of us by saying he considers NFTs to be his medium for creating work. Sheikha Mayasa said you can recycle old buildings and turn them into sustainable places. Andreas Gorgon called on us to challenge the Eurocentric idea of heritage. Hans Ulrich Obris, we need to liberate ourselves from short-termism. And then Amos Gitai, uh, who I actually had a very difficult time choosing a quote from him because there were so many amazing gems. Uh, but he started by saying arts are a way to cross borders. And then he said the arts don't change things immediately, but they leave a trace. It's those traces that make the work. And then uh, from the audience, Elizabeth uh, de Potsdam Park, um, the architect, said, well, where there are traces of the past, you are also building the future. So uh, one of the futures that we haven't really had the chance to dig into is the future of the art market and the art fair. And so with that, we are very lucky to have Mark Spiegler, the former global director of Art Basel, with here t us here today. Uh, and we're even luckier because Scott Rayburn is going to be the one uh, interviewing him. Scott Rayburn is uh, probably the preeminent art market journalist uh, of our time. So please welcome Mark and Scott. Yeah, live up to that, Scott. <laughs>